Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about where to learn all 49 of the Blue Magic spells currently available in Patch 4.5. If you're watching this way later down the line, it has been said that we will have a total of something around 128, at least that's what they've currently developed. But as of the release of 4.5 and the introduction of the job, 49 spells are available, and in this video, we're going to be teaching you where to learn all of them. In the description will be timestamps to each of the individual locations, as well as a sheet that will tell you what the primary location is that the game wants you to learn them, plus recommended locations all down the list. So let's get started. So before we go into the locations of all the spells, let's make sure we're clear on exactly what you need to do in order to learn them. First of all, you do need to be on Blue Mage in order to learn a spell. Then you need to go find a monster that uses the ability you want to learn. Now you don't have to find the exact enemy that the spellbook is trying to give you hints towards. It may tell you to go to a specific zone to learn a spell, but consider that more of a hint. Any monster that uses that spell that you're trying to learn qualifies for allowing you to learn it, and we'll go into some specifics about that later. It's also worth mentioning that in some cases, even if an, a monster uses the ability with the same name but has a completely different effect, that it can also be taught to you, and again, we will cover that one applicable in this guide. Once you've found the enemy that you want to learn the skill from, start fighting it and make sure it uses the ability once. You don't need to be hit by the ability, you only need to see it used. Make sure you don't stun or silence it, just let the ability cast through to its completion. Also keep in mind, not every ability has a cast bar, so if it's an instant ability, you may just need to pay attention to the attacks that you're actually taking. Once the enemy dies after using the skill once, then you will have a chance at learning the skill that you're looking to get. Keep in mind that this chance varies from skill to skill, but the rarer skills, those designated with a higher star rarity in your spellbook, are going to be harder to obtain, most specifically the six primal skills, which we will be talking about a little bit later. It's also worth mentioning that if you're in a party with several blue mages, uh, all of you will learn it simultaneously. Having multiple blue mages doesn't increase the odds of you learning the spell, but you don't have to worry about one person learning it when another person doesn't. Unless, however, people are dead. It's another thing that you need to be alive in order to learn the spell. There have been some people reporting cases of them being dead and learning it, but that is a bug and te technically one that would come in handy if it did happen in this case. It is worth mentioning, though, that if you die in an encounter, and let's say it's in a dungeon, and you resurrect and run back to the barrier, and you're locked out of the fight, you can't participate, when the enemy dies, you still have a chance of learning it as well, uh, the same chance as everyone else. You would basically qualify for the spell because you're alive. I've even heard people say that they were back at the start of the dungeon, and they still learned it after being alive. So uh, just make sure you're alive. One of the most important things when trying to learn Blue Magic. So with that, let's get started on what you can learn for Blue Mage. The very first spell you don't need to worry about, you'll learn it automatically from your level 1 job quest when you initially unlock the job. That's Water Cannon, just don't even worry about that one. The second skill is going to be Flamethrower. Now, the dungeon recommends you learn it from Brave Flox's Long Stop Hard Mode, which you would learn it from the final boss. My personal recommendation is that you go to Keeper of the Lake instead, as both the first and second bosses use the Flamethrower skill. Again, it's not the same exact effect as the one from Brave Flock's Longstop, but because it shares a name, both of these bosses are eligible. You can even use some incredibly strong skills we'll mention later, such as Tail Screw, Missile, or even Doom on the first boss, so he could be very easily farmed, as opposed to going to the final boss of Brave Flock's Longstop Hard Mode over and over again. The next spell on the list is Aqua Breath, and you're going to learn this from Ultros in the Dragon's Neck Trial. This is accessible via the Hildebrand questline, specifically the Aroma Reborn section. Now, whether or not you like Hildebrand, you are going to need to do it in order to get all of the spells on this list. So while you can learn Aqua Breath from Leviathan in both hard mode and extreme as well, there's a skill you can only learn from this that we'll go through later in the list, as well as another instance you're going to need from the Hildebrand questline anyway. Ultros uses Aqua Breath frequently, so odds are you won't miss it. But there's other skills we have to talk about on this list that come from the Dragon's Neck, so we'll just have to wait to talk about those. You can also straight up learn it from Ultros in the Mass Carnival, which is endgame content for Blue Mage in Final Fantasy XIV. I believe that is mission number 20, uh, which you can also learn another ability in, which we'll cover later. The next skill is Flying Frenzy, and this one's a little annoying, but it shouldn't be too bad. This one you get from Pharaoh Series Normal Mode from the second boss, the Zoo. It's specifically used when the Zoo is given 16 stacks of Frenzy, which happens whenever you destroy the eggs along the outside. Basically, destroy two eggs at some point in the fight, 
and the zoo will jump to a player, he'll belly flop on them, he'll stun them and do a ton of damage and cause them to take increased damage. It's very easy to die when hunting for the skill if you're not having a level 70 carry you through it, so be very, very careful. That's a skill you need to see, and then upon killing him, you have a chance of learning it. I don't know of another location you can learn this, maybe from Cornu, the A rank in, uh, I think it's Outer Lenosha, but I haven't tested it there, so I don't know if he actually uses it. So this will be the location, and if I get any alternate locations, or if anyone knows of an alternate location, put it in the comment section below. Next on the list is Drill Cannons, and this one's an overworld one. Finally, one that's not in an instance after the first three. Uh, this you can learn in Northern Thandalin. They actually added new mobs in this patch in order to help you learn certain spells in the overworld. You can learn this from Magitek Vanguard H2 mobs, which you can find over by Castrum Meridianum. Now, while you can learn it from there, you can also learn it from the second boss in Brayflock's Longstop Hard Mode. So if you are hunting for Flamethrower there, and you still need Drill Cannons, you can technically learn both in one run. But learning it in the overworld is super easy, especially once less people are kind of messing around with Blue Mage and there's less competition in that area. So you, it's up to you. Learn it however you want, really. The next skill you'll learn is High Voltage from the ADS mini boss in the Binding Coil of Bahamut Turn 1. It's the very first enemy you'll encounter upon entering, and it's the very first skill he'll use before even auto-attacking the party. Just make sure nobody silences the first one, make sure you let it go off, and you should be fine. You can also learn it from any of the ADSs in Turn 2. There's all sorts of different nodes that all use High Voltage in there. So going to Turn 2 and killing each individual mini boss can also be a very effective way of getting multiple tries within the same instance. There is also a mission in the Mass Carnival where you face an ADS-style monster, and he does use High Voltage there. It's a little bit more dangerous of a situation to let him use it, since the monsters there can be a little more threatening, but it's another option. The next skill to learn is Loom, and you can learn this in Northern Thanalin from Flame Sergeant Dalvag, who is the B rank for that area. Now, the Loom skill is when he teleports to another player, and he usually does some sort of follow-up AoE, but Loom is the teleport itself. So as soon as you see him do that little teleporty animation, that's it, you're good to go. I believe you can also learn it in Amdapur Keep Hard Mode's final boss, as he does use something that looks like Loom. And you can definitely learn it from the Dant Alliance in Tamtara Deepcroft Hard Mode, which are just some ads that I believe are about halfway through the dungeon. So you have quite a few options for this one. Personally, I think going to Northern Thandalin is the easiest option. Next up is Final Sting. This should be something very familiar to a lot of you. You can learn this in Middle Lenosha on the Killer Wesps, which is another new mob they added to the overworld. Now, this caused a lot of strife in the first couple of days of Blue Mage as people were griefing, killing these things constantly. So, what I actually waited to do was I waited until I was a high enough level to solo the Sunken Temple of Karn, which is a level 35 dungeon. Now, there are Temple Bees in there which use Final Sting, and also the first boss constantly spawns bees that use Final Sting. I found that when soloing it on a level 50 Blue Mage unsynced, that one final sting I could survive, but if I tried to eat two simultaneously, I could not. So I would highly recommend that if you are using the first boss, you kill one of the mobs and leave the other B to actually use final sting. This is how I actually ended up learning it. So if you don't want to deal with the overworld or if anyone's griefing, then here's an alternate option. The next one, I do not believe you have any options. You learn Song of Torment from Pharaoh Sirius's final boss, Siren. So if you can knock off Flying Frenzy and Song of Torment in one dungeon, that would be stellar. Song of Torment is used on the tank. It's basically Siren's tank buster, and so you'll see it constantly throughout the fight. Uh, it's a pretty strong dot, so it's definitely a skill that you want to hunt for as soon as you are eligible at level 50. And uh, just... Kill the boss and you should be fine. It's not anything more difficult. I just don't think there's any alternate locations you can learn it, at least not at level 50. The next one on the list is Glower, and this one you learn in the Aurum Veil from the second boss, Coin Counter. It's basically a line AoE that he does that also paralyzes you, uh, and that's all there really is to it. I think you can also learn it from the Eyes Have It in the Fate in Corthus Central, which can be fairly easy to abuse with some other powerful skills. But a lot of players need this skill in order to progress through one of the job quests, and Coin Counter will probably be the place you go to learn it. The next one actually recommends you go into Copperbell Mines hard mode, and honestly, that's laughable. The next skill is Planes Cracker, which you can learn from like any golem type mob in the entire game. I went to North Shroud over by where the second coil entrance is, just southwest of the Etherite, and all the clay golems there all can use it. It's a point blank AoE, that's the skill you're going to be looking out for, but there's tons of golems you can learn this from that aren't Copperbell Mines hard mode, so I don't know why they recommended that you go there. 
The next ability on the list is another easy one. It's Bristle from the Wild Boars over in East Shroud. I'm sure there are other boars that will give you this ability, but it's a buff that they place on themselves. So as soon as you see them buff themselves up, then you're good to go. Kill them off and you'll have this one quick. The next one on the list is our first Wallachy Totem spell. Wallachy Totems are explained through the job quest, but in case you missed it, upon achieving certain things as a blue mage, when you go and visit Wahil Ja in Ulda and speak to him and ask about Wallachy Totems, he'll reward you a totem that teaches a specific spell that you otherwise can't learn from any monster. For this one in particular, it's White Wind, and it's one of the two abilities you'll earn upon getting 10 blue mage actions acquired. There is one you obtain from five actions as well. We'll get to that later on in the list. But once you have 10 actions, I highly recommend going to grab White Wind and its partner ability, which is later in the list as well. Back in the dungeons for the next one, though. The next spell is Level 5 Petrify. Now, you can learn this in a Hawk Manor from the Manor Sentry. Now, this one's a little bit weird, because in order to learn this efficiently, you're probably going to want another spell, one specifically like Final Sting, which we already mentioned how to get. So basically you go through the entirety of the dungeon and then you basically end up at the manor sentry before the final boss room. You cannot learn this from that one. So just push him down to 50% and ignore it. What you want to do is you want to go into the final boss and when she hits like 30 or 40%, she summons a bunch of adds, one of which is the manor sentry. When the manor sentry is brought under 20% HP, he will start using level five petrify. So basically what you want to do, go to the final boss room, get her to 30-40% whenever the Manor Sentry actually spawns, then attack the Manor Sentry and get him to just below 20%, do not kill him, and then as soon as you see him cast and finish casting level 5 Petrify, kill him. If you learn the spell, great, kill the boss, move on to your next spell. If you didn't learn it, use Final Sting on one of the other adds to kill yourself, reset the fight, and then repeat that until you learn level 5 Petrify. It's a little bit annoying to do at level 28 when you can enter Hawk Manor, but it's pretty easy to do overall. So if you want to leave this one to later, it shouldn't take too long for you to actually learn it. Next one, on the other hand, a little more annoying and also a final boss. The next one you learn is Sharpened Knife, and this is from the Wanderer's Palace Normal Mode, the final boss, the Tonberry King. Now, the Tonberry King has a ton of actions, and this is probably one of the least threatening ones that he does. Occasionally, you'll see him buff himself with Sharpened Knife as a buff. That is not the skill you are looking to learn. What that does is it changes his next Tank Buster into Sharpened Knife, which does more damage. As soon as he actually hits someone with Sharpened Knife as an ability and the buff that he gets wears off, that's when you're good to kill him. He's a little bit annoying to do with a party of four Blue Mages. You can do things like Acorn Bomb the Ad so you can Zerg him down, but it's relatively annoying to do this. So try to find a group of people that maybe wants to do 70s and 50s trading off, or if you have the patience, you can do the whole group of 50s. But this one might be one of the more annoying dungeon-related ones to learn. I will say that I don't know if Marberry, the A rank in, I think it's Upper Lenosha, I don't know if they use it, but if they do, that would probably be another location you could go about trying to learn it. All right, now we've got a bunch of open world spells so we can get away from some of those dungeon related ones. Next one is Ice Spikes, and you can learn this in the Central Shroud from the Trickster Imps, which are all the way to the eastern side of the north half of the map. Now, there's a ton of imps that you can actually learn Ice Spikes off of. In fact, Hawk Manor, which you need to go through to get to the final boss for level 5 Petrify, the second boss has an imp that uses Ice Spikes. So you can choose to learn it from there. You can also learn it from uh, Mission 25 at the very least in the, uh, what's it called? In the Mass Carnival. So there's any, any trickster imp, that, anything that uses Ice Spikes, period, you can learn it from. But this is another really easy one to get. The next one you're going to need to get very quickly, so you've probably already gotten it by the time you get to this guide, but the next one is Blood Drain, and you can learn this from Lower Lenosha or even, I think, the Central Shroud. Uh, Blood Drain is a skill that's used by Cave Bats and the tiny Chigo-looking mobs in the Central Shroud. Anything that uses Blood Drain, you can learn it from. So the Cave Bats right by uh, Lower Lenosha is a good option, but if you happen to be in the Central Shroud for something else, you can grab this while you're there. The next one's another easy skill to learn, Acorn Bomb. You can learn it from any of those wandering treant saplings, whether they be in North Shroud or Central Shroud. Doesn't matter. As soon as you see them use Acorn Bomb, then just kill them. Another really easy one, a Bomb Toss. You can learn this from goblins in Middle Lenosha or even in Western Thanalan. Uh, whichever one, as soon as you see them use Bomb Toss, though, kill them, and this one should be a really easy one to learn. Skill number 19 is another Wallachy Totem one. This is Off Guard, and you actually learn this for having five Blue Mage actions and then going to Wahil Ja and Ulda. So you'll learn this before White Wind, which we mentioned earlier, and this will count towards the 10 actions you need in order to learn White Wind itself. 
The next one's another fun one, and that's Self-Destruct. Now, again, they added mobs in the overworld for this one. Over in Western Thanalan, by the Copper Bell Mine's entrance, you can find Glide Bombs in particular. Now, they have two skills. They have Detonator and Self-Destruct. Self-Destruct is the one you're waiting for. Detonator is not the same thing. And luckily, just like with Final Sting, the mob will kill itself with Self-Destruct. So you pull it, probably need to get it like under 50% HP or something. Just don't kill it and let it kill itself and you'll eventually learn it. But you can also learn it from any other bomb in the game that Self-Destructs. They are summoned Copper Bell Mines, Halatali right at the beginning, Hawk Manor. There's uh, bombs in the final boss you can learn it from. You learn it in Cutter's Cry from the ads leading up to the first one. There's so many places. Any bomb that uses Self-Destruct, you can learn it from. The next one is another Wallachy Totem spell. This is Transfusion, and you learn it from learning 20 Blue Mage actions. So this will be the highest level one you get in terms of just learning Blue Mage actions than getting a skill. But either way, uh, it's an interesting skill that you're going to be picking up. The next one is Phase, and this is another one where the game recommends you go to like a much harder area than you need to. Uh, this is used by pretty much every Keekern type mob in the game, and specifically the one that I got it from was in Central Thanalan. There's a whole bunch of them that hang out just west of the Aetherite, and uh, they all use Phase, so I would go there because it's a way lower level, and it's a 6 second Conal stun that works fairly well at the earlier levels. The next one is Flying Sardine, and this you can learn from the Apkalus in Eastern Lenosha, just south of the Aetherite for Costa del Sol. Uh, they use it pretty frequently. It's an instant cast ability, so just pay attention to when you actually take damage from an ability called Flying Sardine, and you should have this one in no time. So the next two spells actually come from the same location, and we're going back to the Dragon's Neck like we did for Aqua Breath. The first skill to talk about is Snort, and this is specifically used by Typhon towards the end of the fight. After you've gone through two of those imp transformations, and you're really towards the end, about 45 seconds after the rotation phase that Typhon does, that's when he uses Snort. It's when he does like multiple knockbacks over and over and over again. It is not the instant tank buster that knocks back early in the fight, it is not the rear conal, it is specifically the attack that comes out late in the fight, where he knocks back like four or five times in quick succession. My personal recommendation is if you don't have this and you have the other two skills from the Dragon's Neck, I would highly recommend just getting this in the Masked Carnival. The same quest and the same mission where you learn Aqua Breath from Ultros in the Masked Carnival, you can also learn Snort from Typhon. So that you can learn much quicker than you can learn it here if that's the only ability you need from the Dragon's Neck. However, the second ability has to be learned from the Dragon's Neck. At least I can't think of another place you could learn it, and that's four tons weight. I think there's locations to learn it in Heavens or Dungeons, but you can't go into those as Blue Mage yet. So I, I can't really remember if there is another location to learn it. This is used by Ultros starting in the second rotation phase. So remember that rotation phase that I mentioned for Typhon where uh, you're in imps and you have to make sure that you don't get knocked off as he rotates with the snort around the outside of the arena? Um, during that phase, Ultros will also start using 4 tons weight, so at the very least, you have to let that phase happen without killing off Ultros and Typhon. It basically makes Dragon's Neck one of the more tedious instances to have to go through, but at the very least, you can walk away with up to 3 spells upon ending. And you can walk away with all 3 in one run if you're super lucky. The next one's another one we're going to ignore the book. Uh, the book recommends you learn this skill, The Look, from Amdapur Keep. Specifically, the monster the book wants you to learn it from is Anna Taboga, who is the final boss of Amd Amdapur Keep Normal Mode. Ignore that completely. Go to Mordona and go to the Leave Quest area and accept the Leave Quest Necrologos, the liminal ones. If you don't see this in the Leave Quest list, complete a Leave Quest, or even I think you can abandon it. I don't remember. Either way, just do a Leave Quest until Necrologos, the liminal ones, pops up. The final enemy that appears once you found all five pages of the Necrologos is a little tiny Anataboga, and he'll spam the look as a Conal AoE. So as soon as you see him do it, kill it. If you don't learn it, just repeat the leave quest until you get it. Beats going into Amdapur Keep. Next one's a super easy one, Bad Breath. You can learn this from pretty much any Malboro in the game. It specifically recommends the Stropers in Central Shroud, not the Helio Stropers, the giant ones, the small ones that are closer to Hawk Manor. It's a really easy one, and honestly, you could do this almost anywhere there's Malboros, so wherever you want to get it, go and get it. The next skill in the book is Diamond Back, and you can learn this in the Stone Vigil Hard Mode from the second boss, Kukafera. He uses it pretty quickly into the fight, usually after the first room-wide AoE that he does. Just make sure you don't accidentally stun it. He will use it again later, but just the earlier he uses it, the better. 
If you have a Blue Mage with Missile or Doom or Tail Screw, after they see it, you can actually use this once he's vulnerable again uh, to quickly end the fight without having to deal with the constant cannon barrages in order to actually fight him. I've also heard that you can learn it in the Steps of Faith. After you let the boss, Vishap, destroy the first gate, uh, that is when the ad will spawn. It looks just like Kukafera from Stone Vigil Hard Mode, and apparently he will use it as well. And then as soon as you kill him, you have a chance to learn. The only downside is, you know, resetting that dungeon's a little more annoying. Uh, but then again, also second boss of Stone Vigil with a four Blue Mage group is also a little tedious as well. So pick whichever one is easier for you. Next skill is another Wallaki Totem one. This is Mighty Guard, and you'll pick this up the same time you pick up White Wind. It's also for getting 10 Blue Mage actions learned. Both, both basically a tank and a healer skill. So with that, moving on. Next one is Sticky Tongue, and I don't think I need to tell you where to learn this, because I'm sure all of you have been grabbed by one of those toad-looking mobs and pulled in. It's that attack, and Sticky Tongue can specifically be learned at, well, any of the toads in the game as you walk past them. Maybe there's some low-level ones that won't use it on you, I don't know, but it shouldn't be hard for you to find. Right outside Mordona, there's ones in Western Thandalin. Uh, I actually used the ones in Western Thandalin that they added called Giggling Gigantoads, because you can also learn a new skill called Toad Oil from them. And uh, since you can learn two skills for one mob over there, that's where I'd recommend learning it. Western Thanalan, uh, it's on the path over to uh, Cape Westwind, you know, just north of uh, Vesper Bay. So once you're over there, you walk past the little bogey ghosts, you should see a ton of them hanging out over by the little lake looking thing. The next two come from the same mob as well, and it's the Ram's Voice and the Dragon's Voice. You can learn this from pretty much any Chimera in the game. The book specifically recommends you learn them both from Cutter's Cry, but you don't have to do that. A lot of people have been grouping up to do Dorme Chimera, who was the old trial for the A Realm Reborn Relic quest. You can also learn it from the first few Chimeras in the 24-man, if you're doing a 24-man Blue Mage World of Darkness for whatever reason. And on top of that, Gorgamera, the Fate out in uh, Northern Thanalan, who is also cheesable with instant kill sp uh, spells spells like Missile and whatnot, uh, you can learn it from him as well. So, bunch of locations, pretty much anywhere there's a Chimera, you can learn it. You can also learn it in the Mass Carnival. There's actually two different missions, one with a Chimera and also mission number 25. Either of those will work. Speaking of OP spells that you can use to cheese a lot of stuff, uh, Missile is the next one, and this is learned in the Battle of Big Keep, or Battle in the Big Keep. This is again unlocked through the Hildebrand questline towards the end of the A Realm Reborn Hildebrand questline, and you specifically get it from Enkidu. Now, all you need to do is let Enkidu use Missile, then kill him as quickly as possible, then if you learn it, that's it, you're done. If you don't learn it, reset the instance. You do not need to follow Gilgamesh and do the second encounter in order to learn Missile here. Next one is one you're probably going to get tired of, and that's Thousand Needles. This is the Cactar ability that I'm sure you've seen a million times. The place that's most recommended to learn it is the Sabotage tender bylors over in southern Thanalan. They are just, I believe, west of the little Alamigo teleport, and uh, they're just big cactars. If you can have a high-level friend help you learn this as soon as possible, uh, this spell will carry you through a lot of the levels, if not all 50 levels on Blue Mage itself, if you're leveling it through traditional means, not like Tag and Bag or anything like that. There's also a leave quest in the area. I always forget what it's called, but there's a leave quest at Little Alamigo that puts you up against cactar enemies as well. If somebody knows the name in the comment section, please throw it in there. Um, you can learn it from that as well, or you can take the game's recommendation and learn it from the Cutter's Cry from the Cactars that are in there. Next one's a tedious one, and that's Inkjet. You can learn this from the final boss of Sastasha Hard Mode, the Kraken. He does that Konal AoE all the time, so you don't have to worry about him using the skill. It's just annoying to have to go all the way to the final boss for that one, but it's simple, and uh, that's where you'll probably go to learn it. Next one's a little easier, thankfully. Fire Angon from the Wanderer's Palace Hard Mode. It's from the first boss, Fruminous, Koheel Ja, and he uses it constantly. It's an instant cast AoE on a random party member. It is not the Angons, the blazing Angons that he throws in the ground. So keep an eye on people who just get an AoE thrown at them randomly, the instant cast one. And as soon as you see someone's taking damage from Flame Angon, kill this boss, Missile, Doom, whatever it is, he dies super fast. And then just repeat that till you get it. The next ability is Moon Flute, and you learn this from clearing 10 stages in the Masked Carnival. So once you have the Masked Carnival unlocked, beat any 10 stages, then go back to get your Wallaki Totem for Moon Flute. Next skill on the list is Tail Screw, and you can also learn this in Sastasha Hard Mode, though this time on the first boss, Carlobos. Most people are not going that route. They may attempt to get it when they go through to get Inkjet, but if you happen to get through Sastasha Hard Mode 
without tail screw and you do get inkjet so you really don't want to go back if you teleport over to alagana in the stormblood expansion and have a level 70 player help you you can actually learn tail screw from all the claws that hang out in the little river just to the east of the alagana teleport that's how i got it and that's how most people i know are getting it Next up, we have Mind Blast. This is going to be another kind of annoying one because you need to learn it fairly early on in order to do the job quests. For this reason, I almost don't really recommend doing the job quest right away. There's not really much a reason to do the job quest until you get to the level 51 and have all the skills anyway. So if you want to save this one and make it a little easier on yourself by doing it later, feel free. But Mind Blast is learned from the last boss of the Tamtara Deepcroft normal mode. And it's just from the final boss itself. Uh, he uses it starting at about 50%. And it's just a giant point blank AoE that paralyzes you if it hits you. Uh, the reason this one's annoying is a lot of people try to do it at a very early level. And so they tend to have to run the dungeon kind of normally, almost. But if you wait till you're a higher level, you can kind of just mow through this dungeon in unsync. And it won't take you very long to learn. I think you can also learn it from the S rank in South Shroud. Wouldn't bank on that one. Next up is the final Wallachy Totem skill, and that is Doom. You actually learn this from 20 stages cleared in the Masked Carnival, and it does exactly what you think it does. It works on a surprising number of enemies and open world fates, so I expect you'll be having a little bit of fun with this one. The next skill on the list is the last one you'll be able to learn from the open world, and that is Peculiar Light from the Lentic Mud Puppies in Mordona. These are, again, new mobs that they added to help you learn this, but if you don't want to learn it from them for whatever reason, you could also learn it from Brayflox Longstop Normal Mode, where you can learn it from the mud puppies that are over there. I believe all of them use it, and the boss, the third boss, uses it as well. But it's so easy to learn out there in Mordona. Just head uh, west outside of Mordona's initial camp in Revenant's Toll, and you should run into a Lentic Mud Puppy in no time. The remaining six skills all come from the A Realm Reborn Primal Fights. Now, it's worth mentioning that you do not need to fight them in extreme unless I otherwise tell you to. Only two of them require extreme in order to actually learn the spell. First up, we have Feather Rain from Garuda. Now, I did say that there would be some that are extreme only, and Feather Rain is one of the extreme only ones. You need to do this in Garuda Extreme. Uh, it's not all that bad, and she uses it like unavoidably in this fight so as long as you don't burn her in like eight seconds you will definitely see her use this spell specifically this is the one where she jumps into the air and a bunch of feathers rain down around wherever she jumped up so yeah you'll see it pretty quick next up is eruption from ifrit in the bowl of embers now you can learn this on normal hard and extreme any of the three difficulties however as of the making of this video there is a bug that is preventing players from learning it in normal mode. It has been acknowledged by Square Enix, and it is something they will fix. So at some point, you may be able to just, as a level 50 Blue Mage, spam through this in normal mode in 25 to 30 seconds and be perfectly fine. That being said, uh, it's been reported that there may or may not be a difference in drop rate depending on difficulty. A lot of people have said there isn't one, but because of the insane insanely varying drop rates between people then i don't even know what to say but uh as soon as this bug fix normal mode will probably be the least headache way to go through doing this the next prime on the list is titan and you can actually learn mountain buster from him now you can learn it from extreme and he does it in all phases if you're going to learn mountain buster from titan hard mode he only starts using it in his final phase after you've broken his heart he'll use it very quickly into the final phase but make sure that you see it there before you just zerg him down the next primal on the list is Ramu, and Shock Strike is the skill that you'll learn from him. Also his Tank Buster, and he uses it in both Hard and Extreme. So definitely go through learning this on Hard Mode and save yourself the headache of doing Extreme. Next up is Shiva, and this one you will learn from Extreme only. And this is Glass Dance. To be honest, this is probably the most annoying one to learn of all six of the primal skills. Because not only is it Extreme exclusive, but it's really, really late in the fight. Usually about two and a half minutes into the fight before you see it for the first time. Basically, get her to her final phase, let her do Diamond Dust, and then just wait until she changes to the bow and does that giant 270 degree AoE. That's Glass Dance. So expect these runs to be quite long and for you to spend quite a bit of time trying to learn it. It took me 89 Shivas, actually more than that. It was 89 in one day for me to learn it. And then 12 kills later, the other half of the group learned it as well uh, because we were doing level 70s, carrying level 50s, and then, and then swapping back. That one was a pain, so good luck with Glass Dance. 
The very final skill on the list that has a page all to itself in the spellbook is Veil of the Whorl on Leviathan. As opposed to Glass Dance, this is one of the easiest ones to learn. You can learn this in both hard mode and extreme for Leviathan, and all this is is the skill that Leviathan uses as soon as he or she appears out of the water along with her tail. It's basically the thing that makes it so you have to have, you know, physical attackers on the tail and only certain people can attack the head itself, like the tank. So it, realistically, there's no way Leviathan doesn't use it. If you have enough burst damage with some level 70s in the group, you can actually burst Leviathan down before even needing to do any of the secondary phases and just kill her right as soon as she, she rises out of the water. Uh, if you can do that, this run takes maybe 25 to 30 seconds. If not, it can take upwards of like a minute to a minute and a half just because you have to deal with all of the dive bombs and whatnot going across the arena. But it's still one of the less tedious ones to learn. All right, and that's going to be a wrap for my guide, or at least my initial guide to learning all the blue magic in Final Fantasy XIV. Like I said earlier, they have at least 128 spells planned throughout Blue Mage's at least immediate future. We probably see those starting in like 5.1 when we will probably get the next Blue Mage update. But when we do, I'll be sure to update this, make a new video and uh, link to it in the description or whatever so people know how to learn the second set of spells for Blue Mage. Been having a lot of fun with this, so hopefully you are too. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And if you have any sort of additional locations where you can learn any of these spells, throw that down there as well. I'm sure I might have missed certain mass carnival spells that you could learn or something like that. But anyway, thank you again for watching. Watching. I'll see you all in the next one, and until then, take care.